Thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to be here. It's great to be able to follow such a great talk about shifts in agriculture. And what I would like to do is hopefully give you a, another perspective on how agriculture can change and develop. Because what you heard from Roger previously was about how much food is grown. But what we're working on is what the quality of that food that is grown is. So with that, I'll introduce myself. My name is Dr. Budukani Lalazi. I work here at the Center for Tropical Crops and Biocommodities at QUT. And the title of my presentation is Banana Biofortification, Golden Bananas for Healthier Communities. So I would hopefully, with this talk, like to uh, enlighten you as to what progress can be made. I'm personally excited and proud of the work that we're doing and I'm very hopeful that we can see a positive change as a result. So as you go on this journey with me, I'm just going to give you a quick overview to see, to give you an idea of where we're traveling. I'm going to give you an overview about carotenoids, what they are, what they do. I'll also be talking about vitamin A and vitamin A deficiency, why it's such a big deal. I'll be giving you a brief uh, overview of what biofortification is, and then I'll give you a quick synopsis of the work that we're doing, our aims, and our progress to date. So, what are carotenoids anyway? As it turns out, carotenoids are a very important group of biochemicals. They're over 600 known members, and they have various functions in nature. They also happen to be extremely important to plants. Firstly, they're involved in photosynthesis. Now this is a process by which plants convert atmospheric carbon dioxide into the sugars that plants and animals need. Simply put, no carotenoids, no photosynthesis, no life as we know. So they're pretty important. Some of their other roles are to attract animals and insects that are involved in fertilizer, in uh, sorry, pollination of flowers and scattering of seeds. And they also have various other roles. So carotenoids are made by a very complex series of steps. These steps merge together to form what's called a pathway. And you can think of these pathways as a factory that convert input materials and convert them into outputs that the plants need for their function. So now this is just a very simplified overview of part of the process. So, What's up with vitamin A? What do carotenoids have to do with this? It turns out that carotenoids are the source of vitamin A for all animals. It's very simple because we humans and other animals can't make it ourselves from scratch. So what do we do? We consume it in our diet. We take it from plants in the form of what are called pro-vitamin A carotenoids, or PVA. We take these into our body as we eat. Our body then converts them into what are called retinoids, so vitamin A compounds, and they're stored in our liver for use. We can also shortcut the process by eating animal products directly as it's already <coughs> converted for us. One important note is that there are very few carotenoids that can serve as PVA. Now, some of the main ones are listed at the bottom of the slide here, and it's important to note that beta-carotene is considered to be the most important among these. So, vitamin A, why is it so important? Well, because it has so many different functions in our bodies. If you don't have enough vitamin A, very important things go very, very wrong. So, for example, you're at risk of permanently losing your eyesight if it's not treated. You're also at elevated risk of getting increasing uh, severity of sickness more than normal which also culminates in higher mortality rates than you'd expect. Now, as you can imagine, this has huge social implications. One, for healthcare burdens. Secondly, for lost opportunities, in terms of people needing energy for education and employment. And it generally reduces quality of life outcomes as well. And this is a very, very sad state of affairs. Because vitamin A deficiency is very simple and easy to treat. All you need to do 
is to improve your diet to include sources of vitamin A compounds. Now, two of the major risk groups are young women, are pregnant women rather, and young children. And this is a huge problem in developing countries of the third world. So what's our solution? Our solution is to bring improved crops into the hands of farmers. Now, who are we trying to reach? We're trying to reach a couple of different groups of people. So imagine yourself in the, in the shoes of a subsistence farmer. You eat what you grow because you have no other options. You're too poor to access other methods. So you might have a little bit of surplus, to maybe save for education, get the necessities, but your diet options are quite limited. Secondly, there's other options to, to treat vitamin A, but they involve having access to a clinic, which in the developing world is not a trivial matter. One of the ways that they solve that is by supplementing vitamin A in the form of either tablets or injections. But this requires repeated trips, repeated doses. And because these programs are expensive to run, it's not cost effective in the long term. Now there's another very important factor that I'm not sure you guys might be aware of, but it's a simple idea of cultural preferences. Because you see, most if not all of the cultures around the world have grown up and developed around the foods that people eat. Because of that, it is very hard to influence and change these preferences. I'll give you a quick example. As I found out, in Uganda, there is a word called matoke. Now, the translation of this word is twofold. Matoke means food, and matoke means banana. So as you can see, in the eyes of these people, banana is the definition of food. So what we want to do is to empower these farmers by improved crops so that they can better manage the nutritional health of their families and thus help their communities. So, why are we picking banana anyway? It will interest you guys to note that banana is possibly the world's most important fruit. I take that again. It is definitely the world's most important fruit because of the more than 100 million tons of it grown per year around the world approximately 85% of this production is consumed in the form of cooked, staple bananas that are consumed by communities, i.e. they're not exported. Bananas also have another advantage, that they produce fruit perennially, so throughout the year, they're a constant source of food. Now, these cooking bananas feed over 30 million people in Africa, and also millions more in India and other parts of Asia. To give you an example, in East Africa, the average adult consumption of staple bananas is about one to two kilograms per person per day. Just imagine that. So hopefully this gives you an idea that bananas have a massive, massive impact on global food production. Now, you'd also be interested to note that bananas with naturally high levels of pro-vitamin A do exist in nature. And there's some examples of them on the slide here. You'll note that they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. There's one important thing to note, that the fruit flesh, which is a part of the banana that you eat, as well as the peel, range in color from yellow to dark orange. This correlates with the amount of PVA in the banana. The simple reason for this is beta-carotene, as you remember before, an important PVA compound, it's the color of this compound is a dark orange color. Now this example here is a real treasure for us. This is a banana variety called Asapina. It originates from Papua New Guinea, and we have the privilege to be able to study this as part of our work, to unlock its secrets and work out how bananas make PVA. This knowledge will enable us to improve staple banana crops and then hopefully improve the nutrition of uh, the communities that they depend on. So our mission is pretty simple. In life, one of the things that I found out is that good results, the best results, often come because of good partnerships. 
And that's what we at PUT have. We're working with the National Agricultural Research Organization, which is one of the main research groups in Uganda, to help them improve their staple banana varieties that their communities depend on. Now, how do we do this? We use genetic modification techniques to improve the bananas. The reason for this is quite simple. Firstly, because bananas are a slow maturing crop. It takes the bananas a long time to mature. Second, and most importantly, is that the banana varieties that farmers worldwide depend on, either commercially or as a staple food, are sterile. This makes genetic technology the most effective means of making this change. To give you an idea of the background behind our project, roughly in 2005, our project began with a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation under their Grand Challenges for Global Health Initiative. Now, our project aim was under their ninth goal, which is improving the nutritional quality of staple foods. And we've had the privilege of working with other groups around the world who are improving the quality of other crops, for instance, such as rice. And these interactions have been beneficial for our group. So, how do we make our partnership work smoothly? Well, we at QUT are doing research on bananas like Asapena to understand how they're able to produce high levels of PVA in their fruit. We then share these with our Ugandan partners so that they can directly change the staple banana, banana varieties rather that their communities depend on so that they have a direct role in empowering and transforming the lives of the communities that they serve. We also help through capacity building. That means we help train up research staff and research students from Uganda. We actually have several students studying here and we're training them up so that they can go back home and make a difference. We also help through technical support. And through these combined efforts, we hope that this will help us achieve our goals. There's another thing that's been very encouraging to the work that we've been doing. We know that the potential for success is there. This is an example of work done by the, the a group working on golden rice. They have done a number of things. So as you can see, your typical rice seed on the far right, it's white. We all know this, we all eat it. So the first step made some moderate improvements, but it was an important milestone. Since then, in their second generation rice, they have been able to get up to 40 times the levels of PVA in the rice seeds as compared to your typical rice. And this is pretty cool and very exciting and encouraging for us as well. So you must be wondering, where are we right now? Well, at QUT, in Australia, we've just completed stage one field testing. And this is an example of one of the many successful lines that we've produced. At the moment, we've produced up to an 18-fold increase in PVA in banana fruit compared to your typical banana. And this beat our initial projections by quite a lot. They were initially roughly fourfold. So we're really encouraged and happy with this. So what we're doing at the moment is we're taking what we've learned from the first stage of field testing into stage two, which we're starting right now, so that we can make further improvements to increase the impact potential of the staple banana varieties that we hope to create. Now, on the slide here are a number of people who I would like to acknowledge because without the generous support and tireless work of the people listed here, this project and the dream that we have simply would not be possible. I'd just like to leave you with a couple of final thoughts about my hope for the work that we're doing. It's nice to see good science, but I really want to see this good science translated into the field where it can change lives. And I hope that this can be a positive disruption with potential and lasting benefits. So I hope that you've been blessed and inspired by this presentation, and I really hope that you take something away from it of the potential that we can achieve. So on behalf of my research colleagues and project partners, I would like to thank you for your time and consideration. Well